everyone. Welcome to episode number 617 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. My guest this week is Eitan Elkin, Director of Marketing at Prisma Photonics. Eitan and I are chatting all about how optical fiber sensing can make a huge difference in utilities and infrastructure. We explore the details of the solution at the heart of Prisma Photonics, hyperscan fiber sensing. The applications that could take advantage of this technology, including extreme weather events and detecting wildfires in real time. And where Aton sees this innovative technology headed in the future. So without further ado, please welcome Aton to Fish Fry. Hi, Aton. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you for having me here. Absolutely. Okay, so first off, tell me about Prisma Photonics Fiber Sensing, and the motivation behind its creation. Prisma Photonics is an infrastructure monitoring company. We're doing this using fiber sensing. I'll probably talk about fiber, what is fiber sensing later, but basically we're monitoring large-scale infrastructures such as uh, the power grid or uh, gas and, and oil pipelines, railways, long things that stretch for hundreds and even thousands of miles. And we're monitoring them without installing anything on the infrastructure itself. We're utilizing pre-existing, existing assets, existing optical fibers, and we're turning into these optical fibers into sensors for, again, it could be thousands of miles. And we can listen to all sorts of anomalies and alert the operators and help them, you know, streamline their operations. The motivation behind this, about seven, eight years ago, Dr. Ronin Bauer, our CEO and founder, along with uh, teams, actually, we have doctors per capita more than any other company I've ever worked for. These guys were experts in fiber lasers and uh, optical fiber sensing. Because the concept is not new, but they took it, rebuilt the whole optical sensor, optical interrogator system. So it's more accurate, more uh, sensitive. And the thought behind this is that utilities need to monitor their assets, which may lie in areas where nobody goes there. In North America, you have, for instance, power lines that go through areas where, you know, apart from three mooses and a bear, nobody goes there. And it needs to be monitored. It needs to be inspected. So they thought about something that could do this in a large scale. And this is the reason they started this. I love that. Okay. So talk to me about the solution at the heart of Prisma Photonics, the hyperscan fiber sensing. Okay. So fiber sensing, again, as I said earlier, it's not a new concept. Well, it's about 15, 20 years old concept. The idea behind it, I'll go physics a bit. I apologize. So we transmit a laser signal into optical fiber. Now, an optical fiber is the most or one of the most man-made, transparent man-made materials. So almost all of the light goes through the laser signal. But due to the nature of the fiber, due to the small impurities in the fiber itself, in the optical fiber material itself, a minute fraction of the light is reflected back. This is a physical phenomenon called Rayleigh backscatter. And actually, this is the reason why when we look up to the sky, the sky is blue and not, you know, just white or something. So we listen to these uh, back reflections, these minute fractions of light coming back. And we do two things, basically. We know the time when we send the, la the laser signal. We know the time when we get the reflections. And by that, we can calculate where along the line this reflection came from. So we know where to locate the event. And then these reflections create some sort of a pattern, which may change if the optical fiber goes through strain or acoustic waves that hit it from, for instance, a person climbing on a power tower or a short circuit on, or, or something like that. 
or any temperature changes. So we'll, you know, we could talk later about uh, uh, wildfire. All these create a small change in the fiber, which then changes the reflected pattern. And we have our AI with a huge library of signatures. And we know looking at these signatures, the AI tells us what happened. So this is the idea behind the whole concept of hyperscan fiber sensing. And then we utilize it to different applications. And we'll probably focus today and what we're focusing these days is is more about the power, the power grid. Okay, so let's talk about those different applications where your technology would be a great fit. So a great fit is monitoring power lines. Again, power lines in North America, there's hundreds of thousands of miles of transmission lines, the high voltage transmission lines, which basically transmit the power from the generation areas, whether these fossil fuels or renewables, into the distribution network, which basically bring the electricity back to the people's homes and and businesses. So we are focusing on monitoring these transmission lines. There's many applications that we uh, looked at the past, but recently, and, and more than recently, we're focusing on the world of power grids and even more about transmission lines, those high voltage lines that bring and transport the energy from the generation sites, whether these fossil fuel generation sites or or renewable energy into the transmission grids, transport the energy into the distribution networks, which basically connect to the homes and businesses. Just in North America, there's hundreds and thousands of miles of transmission lines. Most of them run through rural areas, which cannot be inspected or monitored in any you know, traditional ways. If you put sensors, you can't put them everywhere. You know, once you install enough sensors, you have to go back and replace the first one before you, you move to the next one. Helicopters, people in truck and flashlights, the scale is too enormous. So the fact that we can utilize the pre-existing optical fibers on the transmission line you have and the grounding wire, if you look up, you know, next time you, you see one of these big power towers that you see along the interstates, for instance, there is a cable or two cables on the top, the grounding cables, which can capture uh, lightning. Inside them, there's optical fibers. It's called an OPGW or optical ground wire. So we connect into these existing wires, which were placed by the utilities for communication purposes. And we connect in a substation, so we don't need any line people, lines people to climb and attach anything. We just connect to an existing fiber, and boom. Once we put in a a substation, one of our optical interrogators, we see 30 miles in each direction. When I say we see, we can detect all sorts of electrical faults, weather-related events, vandalism, you know, people climbing, people taking stuff off the towers. And most importantly, we can sense the wind blowing and cooling the lines and therefore allow we help utilities to streamline their operation and basically connect more renewable energy sources because we can help them create more capacity on existing line, something which is called dynamic line reading. So I was especially interested in how your solution could help detect wildfires in real time through light changes from temperature shifts. Talk to me about that. So as I mentioned earlier, the fiber itself, the light goes through, but some of it, a minute fraction of it is reflected. When the fiber undergoes a sudden temperature change, and when we're talking about wildfires, it's not, you know, a few degrees here or there. These are, it could be hundreds of degrees shifts very fast. We can detect these shifts in temperature and looking if we, we're seeing vast areas, we can tell you on which span. Basically, the span is, is the, the term for the electric wire segment between two towers. We can tell you that in this specific span, there's a a very strong shift in temperature. The temperature actually changes the way the light is reflected back, which is amazing. We can then tell you 
continue tracking the changes in the different span in different segments and see how the wildfire moves. Now, in many, many rural areas, you have nothing, but there's lots of power lines going through. And unfortunately, sometimes <laughs> some of these power lines are the cause for uh, the wildfire in the, in the first place. But let's move this aside. We can sense from a very significant distance the changes because of the, the winds that carry the, the this heat wave and alert the authorities. We all also can correlate with meteorological data to make sure that we're not, you know, reading something off. And actually, we have found in Israel, for instance, for the Israel Electric Corporation, we found a few wildfires like this. So it's interesting how this whole comes together. The optical fibers, the light streaming, and then a physical phenomenon, a climate event such as wildfires. So your technology could also be used for extreme weather threats as well, right? Yeah. So it's like a Game of Thrones. It's a, we talked about fire. Now let's talk about ice. One thing that we're also seeing, and there's more and more extreme weather events. Again, in the U.S., just think of, of the news. Stronger winter storms, for instance. One thing is we can detect icing. For instance, when icing gathers on the wire, it's a lot of weight, and it can break the electrical wires or just even break the power towers themselves. And then basically you get no service to the people. Really, in the winter, it's a time of need. So we can detect when icing starts to form, and actually we've done this for uh, the Newark Power Authority. We're monitoring a line for them in the Catskill Mountains. And during the last past winters, we've seen, when I say seen, it means that through our fiber sensing, we're sensing that at several areas, the signal changes because there's a lot of strain on the wires. And then we just raise an alarm telling them that at this power tower or between these power towers, there's icing. And then they can, you know, some utilities send uh, helicopters with people to with wooden sticks, big wooden sticks to hit the wires and basically break the ice. Something that uh, it sounds fun, but uh, a little bit risky, I would say. Some uh, may heat up by sending more current into the wires and just heat it up and cause the ice to melt. We can also, in, again, extreme weather, tell utilities if lines are down, we can give them the pinpoint because, again, if a line is down and the wires are broken, we can tell up to a feet resolution where exactly is the break. And then instead of, of sending crews in the snow to look for where it, where it can be, we direct them immediately and basically help them to return the, the service, return the, the power service as soon as possible for the different communities. And there's more and more things we can do with uh, in, in different climate uh, events. So Eitan, where is Prisma Photonics headed from here? It's interesting. So we talked about climate. I'll be careful and say that we've seen more and more extreme climate events. So there's more space for us there. Another thing is that since we're using AI models, which take and look at a library of signatures from past events, the more we deploy, the more customers we encounter, our library grows. And it's since this is a learning, a machine learning algorithm, these, it's a learning system. As we you know, install and deploy more, we become more accurate, more precise, less false alarms a much better classification. So it's, it's a sort of a snowball effect. It grows and grows and grows. If I go back to climate metaphors. Another thing which works beautifully, and, and it's, it's a very hot topic now for utilities, is dynamic line rating, what I previously just mentioned. The concept is that you want to add more capacity to the existing infrastructure. The existing infrastructure is aging. In the U.S., a lot of it is from the 60s and 70s. Some lines are from the 50s. These are old lines, and they cannot bear the, the amount of energy which is needed 
just think about EV charging. Last year, one of five cars sold globally was electric. So the consumption keeps growing, but the infrastructure is old. So what we do and, and we help utilities is to, is to create more capacity on the existing infrastructure and use also this capacity to connect more renewable energy sources. We do this by using dynamic line rating, measuring wind on every span, on every segment between towers. And since you cannot put more energy, more electricity on the existing wires because they may heat up and cause damage. But since we know the wind metrics blowing across the, the lines, we know that these lines are actually being cooled right now. And therefore, we tell the utility, yes, you can put in 30% more and basically streamline more uh, renewable energy. So these are the big things that we're you know, heading to. And luckily for us, we're here at the right moment, at the right time to capture the moment when the need for electricity just keeps growing. That makes sense. All right, Eitan, it is time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? So recently, we came back from a hiking trip in the heart of France. We were hiking along the Dodon River. And each morning, before you start your hike, you just go through the small village and pick up stuff. So you go through a, a bakery, a boulangerie, and pick up just the most beautiful baguette, cracking. It's so it's so fresh. And then you stop at the butcher, the at charcuterie, and, and pick up a you know a sausage or, or or some cold meats. Stop at the formagerie, the the cheese shop, and just get yourself a nice slab of cheese. And you walk, and you then stop at the most beautiful place on a fourth floor, overlooking the river, and maybe a castle, you sit with your loved ones and have a simple but the most delicious picnic lunch and sip some dry cider. I would, right now, would like to be transported there. Again, great food, great views, and the people I love. That may be the best answer I've had to that question ever. <laughs> Thank you so <laughs> much, Eitan. I wish I could send myself to that location right now. <laughs> well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. This was super cool. Thank you very much for having me here. If you'd like further information about Prisma Photonics, I've included a couple links below the player on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If LinkedIn is more your thing, you can follow us or me on there. We also are on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series, hosted by me, and our animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or heck you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of January 31st, 2025, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried.